Hi, and welcome to Taking Your Dominion, the weekly discussion about on earth as it is in heaven and our role and responsibility in making that happen. So I want to start with dominion. In choosing the title, Taking Your Dominion, my goal here is to awaken us, awaken the church to our role and responsibility on the earth. We have a role to play. So I want to talk about where this concept of dominion comes from. It's scriptural. In the beginning, God told man to take dominion over the earth. And to illustrate that, I think the best way to look at that is the story of Israel. So from very early on in Genesis, uh, Genesis 12, 13, uh, God calls Abram to a land that he will tell him about. And it ends up being the land of Canaan. And then he promises Abram that his descendants will one day inherit that land, et cetera, et cetera, bless all nations. And of course, we know that that eventually comes true. But I want to talk about this idea of dominion because they were supposed to take a specific territory in order to occupy, in order to be a a city on a hill, a country on a hill that other nations would see and would want to emulate and therefore that would lead people to know about God. What their history is more full of is not quite occupying the land, not fully occupying it or occupying places that they weren't supposed to occupy. And then also, not just geographically, but not taking full control over the land. But the Danites had difficulty taking possession of their territory, so they went up and attacked Leshem, took it, put it to the sword, and occupied it. They settled in Leshem and named it Dan after their forefather. End of parentheses. I want you to note what's going on in this story. Dan is told to take a certain territory, and what they realize is it's really hard. It's really difficult. They're not able to do it, quote unquote. And so instead, they attack some other cities, some other towns, and then they name it Dan as if that's going to make everything okay. This story does have meaning in the way that I'm explaining this because it shows up in scripture in parentheses. There's this kind of idea of, well, I'm kind of sorry to tell you this, but here's an example of some things that happened. All of Israel's problems, and they had many, came because of this misoccupation of their promised land. What does that have to do with us today? I want to talk about something that I just recently read. Uh, read it in this book. It's called Bold as Lions. There are two different words used in the original language of the New Testament for the will of God. The first word is bulima, and the second is thalima. Bulima is the word that reveals the will of God as to what is firmly established and settled in the will of God. God. The return of Christ falls into this category. The word thalima is much different as it refers to the will of God as God's desires, intentions, or wishes. For example, God is not willing that any should perish, it says in 2 Peter 3, 9. Yet people are perishing every day. This will of God's is obviously dependent upon people's response to God's heart. God has the power to make anything happen that he wants, but his heart's desire is to patiently develop us so that we yield to his word, take responsibility, and co-labor with him. There is a will of God's that is dependent on our obedience. There has to be, or our obedience would mean nothing. It's God's will, his desire, his wish, his hope, his dream, that earth will be like heaven but that's dependent on us. Like we're supposed to actually make the earth more like heaven, more like the way God would want things done, uh, more loving, serving, helpful, productive, creative, inspirational, practical. There's a practical aspect of the kingdom of God. Uh, and we know that from uh, the, the early part of Genesis, uh, there was a garden and Adam was set in the middle of it to work it. Work happened before the fall. Uh, why? Because of God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even the original mandate of spreading the garden was about making the garden of God, the his plan, his intent, spread all over the entire earth, subdue it, multiply it, et cetera, et cetera. When we think in terms of taking your dominion, and we'd speak in terms of the will of God, and we speak in terms of the ecclesia, which is all of us, by the way, I want you to ask what we all should be asking, which is why us now? We are here for a reason. We are here to help spread the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And I don't mean church. 
I mean communities that function better. I mean uh, a people that actually get, get along and respect one another and work together. I mean the things of God for the practical needs of humanity. Uh, not even necessarily, although it's included in it, ministries, but knowing that all work ministers to other people. That work matters, family matters, communication matters, how we get along with others and work in neighborhoods, uh, jobs, uh, companies, just et cetera, et cetera. So uh, not by any means just the theological side of this, but the practical side of this. So welcome to Taking Your Dominion. As I said, a weekly discussion about on earth as it is in heaven and our role and responsibility in making that happen. Appreciate you listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks.